What's going on you guys, it's Jeff Busse and you guys probably will see this video, I don't know when, but it is quarantine time. It is around April. All right, it's April 22nd, so I did something pretty cool. And I got a, I got my trailer, Derek's truck, and we headed up towards Conquer. And where you see in the back of me is uh, not a 240 nor a 86 but an RX-7 FC. Let me show you. So right here, as you can see, this is a rolling chassis. And, you know, no engine or drivetrain or anything. The interior is pretty gutless. But I'm not too worried about it. Um, it does need a lot of work, which I'm uh, currently start working on right away. Because you're, when you're stuck in quarantine, got nothing else to do and don't have money to build that, you go ahead and get another project that's a lot cheaper to work on. So, as you can see right here, this RX-7 was purchased for free. That is right. I got this RX-7 for free. Rolling chassis, no nothing, just gave me the paperwork and now this is mine, free. Probably 40 bucks for gasoline, but I got this for free, man. And that's the best thing I've ever done because I've been looking so hard around the Bay Area, all of California for an RX-7 chassis. And they're really hard to find on mint condition. Uh, the body's usually a little bit damaged and this and all that but so i got this body pretty straight and he has no fenders no steering rack no bumper i mean they it's free like i've said so there is still gonna be a lot of work but then again there's no worries on that because it's just body cosmetics they really remove chassis or anything um crazy not sure what i'm gonna swap it in yet um uh, still debating on what to do with the swap yeah ls does sound like the cheapest way to do it just to get this thing going but I really want to focus on the body and try to make get it straight and then paint it and maybe go with the flare setup not sure where I'm going with this project yet but yeah I'm gonna start on on the body like I've said uh, interior wise might be gutless might put back some interior to make it look nice because I am trying to make it a streetable car as well and have fun with it yeah it was a quick little video I guess I just wanted to show you guys on on the condition of this vehicle you know it has a slave cylinder everything it is a manual I mean I'm not familiar with RX-7s uh, maybe they do come in automatics, but yeah, I got it in a manual uh, stock suspension He at least has all four wheels to get it rolling it rolling somewhere It did come with a lot of more extra parts as well So honestly if I really wanted to and I didn't have enough money to get this bill I just slap some fenders put the bumper back on sell it for two racks easily because or 1500 or 1200 dollars depending how in a rush I am to get rid of this thing, but you know this is easy money if i ever want to plan to sell it and yeah i'm gonna go ahead and work on the body and i do not have my tripod because i did go to washington and i left it in shay's trunk so i'm about to just show cut off clips and hope you guys enjoy what is going on you guys um it is day two i'm working on this project technically because day one i picked it up and then i kind of worked on it overnight probably around 11 p.m but check it out as you can see uh I did a lot of work already not too much, but a good amount. Started sanding it down, trying to make make it smooth because I removed all of the loose um, flaky clear cut that was on here. Like this side, this side kind of vanished now. Uh, as you can see on this side, it's kind of rough. So yeah, I've been doing that all, all last night, removing all the flaky clear cut that was all around here. And now it's looking smooth. Uh, the roof, I'm gonna work on it. It's over there. Yeah, I'll try to sand it down, but I didn't realize it doesn't have the harness or the mounting kit for it. So when I pushed on it, it fell on the on here. Luckily, I didn't damage the windows or anything, so it's still pretty mint. Pretty much what I'm doing right now, just sanding the body. Uh, not nothing too crazy like you guys would expect. Like the you know, it's a work in progress. All right, guys, so I finally sanded the whole body and now I'm doing some filler. So yeah, right now it's around a 400 grit setup because I'm doing the filler. Once I do the filler and I sand that down, then I'm gonna go ahead and wet sand it with 1000 grit and the whole body should be ready. Um, it wasn't too many dinks, just like right here. And this one had a pretty deep dink, but not too much. I couldn't take it out with, a could not take it out with my hammer or pin because the wheel, wheel, wheel welds are in the way. So yeah, I just filled that one up as much as I can and then I'm gonna sand it down, work my way down. And for here, there's a lot of dinks and like it was just all bad. 
but I hammered it out with my hammer and the pin and as much as I can and then I went ahead and filled that up as well and then here off to the sides too and yeah it's pretty much it and after that it should be the doors the doors you could tell it has some dinks but you know just some work to it and it'll be good as new update haven't found fenders yet I've, I have but they're kind of ripping me off right now I've done the doors as you can see it's just thin little layers it's not really you know full on caked on there and then I did this side and it came out pretty bad because my boy Derek called me on the phone and I was like look at the phone we'll like put it on now I added a little too much of the adhesive mix and it kind of just dried up too fast on me and I just couldn't get it smooth so now I gotta re-sand all this and redo it again but no worries it's just a door now what is up you guys it's another day and so let me backtrack a bit so you guys noticed that I've done the bodywork on the vehicle and I still haven't done the doors yet but I've done the whole body of it except for doors but I'm gonna go ahead and work on these two but still gotta finish up the doors. Doors aren't that good. Oh my bad, I burped again. But I sanded it down and I thought I did it good, but then there's these spots that I missed, so I'm gonna go ahead and sand this down again. It's not that noticeable, but it is an issue for me because you know I'm doing all this body work and you could barely tell, but I'm sure if I put gloss paint over it, it's gonna be noticeable. And I don't want people to check it out and be like, hey, you did the body work yourself. I'm like, yeah, I did. And like, oh look, there's hella ridges on here. And I'm just like, you know what? That's fucking sock you real quick for saying that shit. Anyways, um, <sighs> alright, so following that day, it was yesterday, I went ahead and went to pick up some parts. And All right, so I went, I went ahead and picked up some parts and also, well, tomorrow I'm gonna pick up some more parts or either tonight, I'm not sure yet, but I went for a budget build, as you guys know. I'm going for, you know, just trying to get this on the road. It's a quarantine build, I guess. What I picked up yesterday was pretty much fenders and bumper and also transmission. And I got all that for 300 bucks. And honestly, that's the best deal that I've ever gotten in my life because fenders and bumpers easily could have been $600. But I went ahead and didn't lowball him. I did not lowball him. I hate lowballers. But he was asking 300 for the whole. All right, I did lowball him. But he was asking 300 dollars for the fenders and bumpers. And ah, there is some place in Los, Los Angeles where there are 40 dollars for the fenders. And so I said, you know, I'm kind of looking at 150. You know, 50 each, each fender, and then 50 for the bumper. And he was like 200. And and I was like 200 with the rack and pinion and eventually he didn't want to do the rack and pinion so I just got for 150 the fenders and bumpers which is still a good deal and I'll show you that right now. And then I went ahead and picked up a CD09 for 150 bucks as well. It does have slight third gear grind like you said but I'm pretty sure with the short shifter it should remove that. If not then even rebuilding it DIY with you know rebuild it myself and just get the gears for it and synchronizers I'm sure that thing will run like cherry and I got that for 150 bucks as well. So as you can see right here this is a transmission and it works fine so far you know putting in gear and everything and having it in neutral works great but comes down to revolutions once it's on the engine how much would it handle with RPM? And over here, you can see there are fenders and bumper on the vehicle. And it's, you know, it needs a lot of work, but it'll, it's doable. But yeah, it's, oh, it's almost looks like a complete car now. It just needs uh, some kinks to it and body work. And looks like this thing's gonna be on the road pretty early compared to the Datsun because Datsun is really expensive expensive to work on so I went with the budget built with this instead so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and work on the fenders after I do the doors for that I'm gonna have to first take out all the dinks and as you can see the body's not straight right here so I'm about to bang that out as well which no worries I know how to do that so yeah I hope you guys stick around and I'll show you that after how it looks all right so now I did door and the door's pretty straight. I think I already showed you guys actually. But anyways, I did the door already. And the other side I was already doing it, but I went ahead and 
light coated it now on some ridges and should be done afterwards. But now I'm gonna move towards the uh, tail lights. I'm gonna remove these. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and sand those downs and paint, paint it as well. And then work on the bumper. I'm not gonna remove it at all. I'm just gonna work from there. And then yeah, that's what I'm currently be gonna be doing. What's going on you guys? It is another day here with JF Boosted. Um, I am continuing on the RX-7. Uh, so far I showed you the clip of the tail lights that I haven't even worked on yet because um, I've been working on taking out dents on the RX-7 fenders. So as you see, the tail lights are off as you can see. Uh, and then I finally sprayed it down here and I'm proceeding for the front. So what I've done in the front is I removed all the dinks. As you can see, here's uh, black Sharpie marks and I removed them because they were dent inside hella bad. And also right here had a big old like dent, dent inside. And now I massaged it and made it flush with the body and it looks great. As you can see all the way up here, it looks awesome. The one issue I ran into though is that this is probably a 1990 Model FC and my trim is completely different so I might have to swap that this trim because I do like this trim more or yeah I do love this trim more so I might have to swap this whole trim to this design but it's not a big issue right now so as of for right now just leave it as is. As you can see I finally worked on the fender alignment so here's the body lines it's pretty smooth and straight. That's as much as I can go in, by the way. Um, I can't really go much more than that. Uh, so I mounted it all. I did go through a hassle right here, but I decided to mount the inside bolt as well, and now it's flushed. I did do the bottom bolts as well down here. And now this whole thing's finally ready to get sanded onto the body because I didn't want to sand it on the table and deal with that issue. Now I'm moving on with this fender right now, and as you can see, the Fender's pretty straight too. So I'm gonna put all the mounting hardware that I bought in Home Depot. It's an M6 1.0, and I got a 25 millimeters because they didn't have any smaller than that. And then I'm gonna proceed with this from bumper. All right, so I finally mounted the bumper and fenders, and it's coming out pretty damn clean. As you can see right here, body is flushed, very nice. So far it just has a nut. I might have to add some washers because if not, the nut will simply just pop out of the oval entries. Um, here's a good one. So you look like this and the nut's not that wide. So it could just slip in if I ever like get a hit or curve or something that will just pop out of place. Well, I'm not sure even high winds might make it fall off. But I'm gonna add a washer afterwards because I am gonna plan to remove these and wrap them. So right now I'm just gonna mock it up on here because I want to work on the body and then I fasten them down, all of them, all the bolts, because I want to make sure that everything's aligned perfectly. That way when I do install them again, I don't have to have an error somewhere and then have to, having to start all over would suck. So everything's mounted perfect. As you see, it looks great. Uh, I am gonna move over to this side because you haven't seen it. It's actually flush right here too. But the only problem I have is right up here, um, for some reason, this lip went up. You could tell the curvature. It went up for some reason, but I'll try to figure it out. Probably a hot gun would make it go flat again. This side, perfect. It goes right inside. This side, I'm having an issue with it. Um, it's smacking onto this weather strip. But as you can see, this weather strip's actually inside more compared to this one. This one's out by almost a... Uh, eighth or I could say three sixteenths. So if I think if I push this in more, I'm pretty sure this would go in flush. Uh, moving on, I did mount the bolts right here. So this is pretty on there. I, it probably has a lot of stress because I kind of just screwed it in and then fastened it down while pushing towards here to make these fit. Uh, so yeah, now I'm gonna go ahead and wet sand it. Or yeah, I think a 400 sand would do good then wet sand afterwards. I don't think I need a very strong um, 120 grit because then after that, I mean, I'm gonna have some gashes on it again. Then after 
the, I think I'm gonna go over all around the car and sand parts that I need. Like right here, I'm gonna sand this whole part as well. And I'm move over and sand that as well. But those are just in the future. Right now, you gotta get to this. It is now ready to get uh, light sanded, like wet sanded, and just this side. In the middle, I began already. I haven't started on that other side yet, but I am gonna start taking apart everything. Everything's aligned well now, so it's time for me to take it apart. I just hit a coat of spray paint. Yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and take apart the headlights and then send it out and paint them. I guess I'm gonna paint them black with my spray gun over there or I'll see what I'll use because either way, wrap's gonna go on there, but I just want no rust to corrode it. Cause it's gonna be a while to wrap it cause I still gotta put the engine and then trans. So I'm gonna take those apart and then paint them. And once they're painted, I'm gonna let them sit somewhere and dry. Yeah, I'm gonna take these off, paint them out and then I'm gonna sand this and I'm gonna do some fixes or things I don't want on the bumper. Like those two headlight or fog lights. I don't want that ugly thing right there. So I'm gonna remove those. I might cut in the middle section a uh, lip underneath the whole thing so it makes it'll make it look meaner for this side i'm gonna send it down as well but now everything's aligned perfectly so should be no issue installing it again and yeah i'm gonna go ahead and take everything apart once they're all sanded down to get light coated and painted finally primed these uh headlight covers uh sandable primer the can ran out, so I'm gonna go ahead and order actually a gallon of primer and I'm gonna use my spray gun because it's gonna be more efficient and cheaper than getting, you know, a freaking spray can every time. So I'm gonna go ahead and primer the whole body of the car, but after that, once I sand the whole car. I haven't done the light coat on that be simply because I went ahead and sanded this whole side as well. So now it's ready to get a little bit of some filler in some areas and should be good to go. Um, the fill areas would be like in this location and up here because there's like a slight kink or nick on that. Um, I'm going to continue on the bumper as well. I was going to go ahead and do some cutting but I think I'm just going to leave it stock. I'm going to remove this whole lip though because the lip is pretty trashed up. And yeah, this is pretty much what I'm doing right now. Like I've said, I'm it's a lot of work you guys I mean it looks like I'm not progressing too much but because I'm sending this whole thing down by hand yes I could use a rotary sand um, thing which I have on the floor and it's helping me because that has a 200 grit but after that I have to use my 400 grit and the thing is it's, it's quarantine so I don't really have money to be spending on that kind of material right now so I'm doing as much as I can trying not to spend. I was gonna, I think I told you guys I was gonna wrap this car, but I saw on Google or so that I can't wrap a car unless I um, primer and then paint or it has, it has either OEM paint or some type of clear coat on it to make the, you know, the wrap stick to it. And so I'm deciding now is to primer the whole car with that gallon paint that I'm gonna get and go ahead and go with the O'Reilly's um, Dupli color, you know, in the shelves where they have just gallon paints of whatever color you want. Well. I'm going to go to budget on the next level and use that instead. Paint the whole car with it. Pretty sure it'll come out great. I'm um, not sure when I'm going to get it. Like I said, I still have to do a lot before I start priming the whole vehicle. I think I'm going to go ahead and start covering the windows and interior with bags or something. And try to keep it from getting overspray inside. Because I do wish to keep the inside black. Because uh, once I touch a little bit in the inside with, you know, orange paint or whatever other color, it's not going to be orange, you guys. Maybe, I don't know. But once I overspray on here, uh, it's gonna be a problem because then I have to go ahead and paint also the inside or paint it gloss black. I mean, not a big deal. It is gutted, so. Other than that, you guys, I mean, this car is slowly getting put together and wish me luck. All right, you guys, it is like 10.30 at night, probably. Um, I'm still advancing on the front bumper. Pretty sanded down now, has a 400 grit so far, and then I'm gonna jump to a 1000 grit and it should Finish all the lines and then go with the sandable primer probably throw like two coats in it to fill in all the gaps of the well if there's any scratches and then go with the 2000 3000 grit i'm gonna just hit it with 3000 grit and then finally paint the whole bumper because that's not ready yet but yeah all this is coming up pretty great um i am filling up this part of the area because it seemed to have a indent so i filled it up it's not a lot of 
Bondo because usually when that flexes it cracks it's just a little film and yeah 